Hello everyone and welcome to this video. Today I'll be showing you how you can design an API uh, using a design first approach instead of going directly to the implementation. And this has numerous advantages. Uh, I will talk about them uh, as I go. But uh, yeah, you've probably been in this situation before where you're like, okay, I need to build an API. I'm just gonna bootstrap a server similar to the one you see on the screen right now and then just uh, start adding different routes in here and uh, that's uh, that's fine especially if you're a solo developer but if you're working a few people together or you're working in a team or in your work there might be a better solution and I'm about to show you how um, I have discovered a nice way of doing it at least Okay, cool. So the thing you see on the screen right now is just a very simple uh, Fastify server, which is uh, initializing the server here, defining a route called slash ping that returns a string that says pong. And then we have the uh, server listen uh, method called here where you put which port that you want the server to listen to. Okay, so very simple, very basic. Uh, just a quick explanation of the project itself. This is, a, as I said, very, very simple. So we have a Fastify as a dependency. We have TypeScript. And because we have TypeScript and we have Node, we also need to pull in the types for Node. Okay, so very simple. And uh, up here we have two build scripts, or we have two scripts even. One for build, which just calls uh, the TypeScript compiler and then the uh, node command that points at lib slash index.js. And then last but not least, we have the TS config. And this one is just a default one, one that you can spawn by calling uh, TSC, TSC init here. Then you get this. Uh, I changed the defaults a little bit. So the target is now ES2017, which is a requirement by Fastify. And then I put an out here, so all the JS goes in the lib directory. And I also put an in directory, I believe. What, what is it called? Oh, it's called the root deer. Okay, so that's the source directory on the left here. Okay, no more talking about the project itself. Now I want to show you guys how you can design an API using the design first approach. So the tool that I like is called Stoplight Studio. And uh, this is how it looks when you open it. Uh, basically, we're gonna create a new project in here. So uh, let me, yeah, let me just create one API then I can talk a little more about what it does. All right, cool. Okay, so what is this tool? So basically this tool is a tool for designing APIs using a graphical interface. So I haven't really been able to find any tooling that makes editing a open API file um, very nice. And having a GUI like this makes it so much easier and more, you know, you get a better overview of how the API looks. That's very, very cool. And if you're not familiar with OpenAPI, uh, it's basically a standard on how to create REST APIs. So let me just quickly show you guys how that could look. So let me let us create a new API here. Let's call it Cool API, and we're gonna use JSON. I'm just gonna use the latest version, 3.1. Okay, so here we go. Uh, now it's opened a default project for us. You can see here it already defined it some routes or paths as it's called in here. Uh, one for users and also one for, yeah, creating a user and one for either getting or editing an existing user. So we have a get route here and a path patch route here. Yes. Okay, so the op open API file, the one I talked about, how does that look? If we go to the code here, we can see 
a preview how it would look in the code. So that's what I was talking about earlier. I haven't really found any great editors for actually going in and filling out this information yourself. Um, so what I really like is this tool that you can do things in a GUI. It's very cool. Okay, so uh, what's the idea here? What what do we need this tool? Well, in here we can basically create our API and then we can export a this file that I saw just over here on the left. So this uh, JSON file here. And uh, I'm actually pretty happy with this example, this user example, where we have a user model. So under the models folder here, you can see we have a user here with an ID, first name, last name, email, and so on. And uh, that's the one that uh, gets returned here after we create a user. So here, down in the response area, you can see we point at a user here. Okay. Now, that is the example. Now let's try now to export it. If I press save here, I can choose a directory. I'm going to choose to sign first API. I think this, nope, not this one, this one. And I'm just going to call it spec spec.json. Okay. So now I have my spec. Now if I go back to the code, I can actually use that spec and then get a ton of benefits right out of the gate. And that's why it's really awesome to have this open API standard because then usually somebody created a library or we can create one ourselves, but in this case, we can actually leverage a library that does quite a lot for us. So the one that we would like to pull in it's going to be uh, uh, yarn at fastify open API glue. Okay. And I want a, a specific version because I have some issues with the latest version. So I'm just going to downgrade a little bit here to 272. After installing that, I can import it. Okay, and uh, how do I initialize this glue uh, library, so to speak? So just maybe a quick word what, what it does. Basically, this library takes a open API file and then it basically applies all the things in here to your API. So it does all the validation automatically for what you return, but also what you get in. And that's extremely powerful because then you don't need to write all the JSON schemas yourself. You just take it directly from the spec. And uh, that is awesome, very awesome. So let me show you guys how to initialize this. So if we go to our server object, we can call the register command and here we can just pass in our glue plugin. And then we need to just apply a little bit of config here. So of course we need a path for the spec. That's the first one. So you can see currently the spec is in the root. So we can go from our current directory one step back and then to the spec.json, okay? So we can put that in here. And uh, yeah, that's looking good. You see TypeScript is complaining and that's because we didn't uh, assign our service yet, which is the second config that is required. These are the two required parameters. So the specification and the service, okay? So what is the service? Service is basically the implementation of the different routes, okay? So if we go back to Stubline Studio, remember we have these two routes, which one is user? The other one is this users user ID. So if we go to, for example, the user route um, from Stoplight Studio, I can actually go to preview and then call the API here. Okay. 
Now, if I, let me just start service here. So I am gonna call build and then I'm gonna call start afterwards, okay? So I can just do that in one swoop here, yarn build, yarn start. So just clear out this yarn build, yarn start. Okay, let's do that. Now, let's see. Okay, so it's complaining about that this one is not valid. So maybe our path is wrong. Let's just lock our spec out here and then rerun. Oh, what? Something is not right. Uh, Okay, I think I had a syntax error. Let's see. Okay, we have the path here, looks correct, and then we have the server listening now. So that's that's good, good stuff. Now server so running, if we go back to Starblast Studio, we can actually press this an API request here. And it's just gonna return a fall for not found. Okay, so that is maybe because we didn't put in the right base URL. So if you go to API overview, we can go here and then change the port to 8080. Localhost is still okay. So let's update that one. Jump back here. Try one once more. And now we get this file of 500 and it says post user not implemented. Okay. So the post user is operation ID over here. We could change that if we don't like this name, but I'm just gonna keep it for now. So yeah, our API automatically due to this glue already responded with an appropriate error message here, even though we haven't put anything in service. But let's actually put something in then. So post user, that's gonna be a function in here, right? And here we can return something. Let's just return message test save it and then let's do yarn build and yarn start again and then let's try send api request and now you can see we get a id is required field here so still a 500 but now the error is different so it recognizes that we try to implement this post user but we're missing an id it's not returning what we're expecting and what are we expecting to return if we go to the user post here, we can see it's expected to return this schema user, which is basically all of this, okay? So if I were to take this example and return that here, save that, rerun the project, go back to Starblast Studio, go back to the route I was testing, then press send API request, you can see I get a 200 back and everything looks great. Okay, so if I actually were to go in here and let's say remove the ID and then make sure I rerun that and then press send API request, it would complain that ID is required because in our schema here, it says ID is required on the user. So if the ID is not there, then it's gonna complain. So that's cool. So now we can also do another test and that is let's remove the first name here and try to send, press send. You can see here we're getting a validation on the body automatically because yeah, we didn't include the first name and the first name is required in the spec, right? So if we go down here, we can see this is the body we're expecting and that all of these are indeed required, okay? So all that validation for free and uh, that's just by basically registering this open API glue plugin and yeah, creating this, the file here open API file. And uh, yeah, just to add one more 
benefit of uh, using a standard like OpenAPI, and that is you can automatically generate documentation like this uh, using Swagger. So that is great, especially if you're working in a company, you need other people to use your API, then you get all that for free out of the box. Okay. I hope this was uh, useful for you guys. Um, I won't talk much more because I already talked a lot, but uh, this is basically how uh, you can get started at least uh, creating an API. Okay. I hope this was useful and I'll see you in the next one. Peace.